Okay, Believe It or Not. That's actually a song. Believe it or not, I'm walking on air. Um, so hopefully you feel like you're walking on air. All we did was add and subtract. That's all we did. We just added and subtracted rational expressions. So now what we're going to do is we're going to simplify rational expressions involving radicals. Basically, complex fractions. That's what we're going to focus on. Complex fractions. So you might have, go, oh, I kind of remember something like this. You'll remember. Complex fraction is a fraction within a fraction. And we call that complex. A complex fraction is a fraction within a fraction. So we need to clear that. So I like to count the number of terms that I have in my fraction with a highlighter. I certainly don't just cross things out. So I've got one term, two terms, three terms. So if I multiply one term by something, I have to multiply all the terms by that something. So I'm going to multiply all the terms by this fraction right here. So this 2 times the square root of x plus 1. I'm going to multiply every term by 2 times the square root of x plus 1. And what's that, what that's going to do is it's going to clear the fraction. So I'm no longer going to have a fraction within a fraction. But the x plus 1 has to go in parentheses. I have to multiply it by a 2 and a square root of x plus 1. So now term by term. This first term, let me just kind of bubble it for you, this first term is going to be 2 times the quantity x plus 1 because a radical times itself is just the radicand. Then we've got minus in this next term, so this next term right here, the denominator is going to be canceled out so I'm just going to have an x got to be loving it. And then in the denominator, I've got 2 times x plus 1 times the square root of x plus 1. Don't go too fast here. Let's just work with the numerator for now. I've got 2x minus x. 2x minus x is x, and 2 times 1 is 2. So we've got x plus 2 in the numerator. Now in the denominator, I have Check this out. I've got 2 times x plus 1 to the first power times x plus 1 to the 1 half power. Same base, add the exponents. So we've got 2 times the quantity x plus 1 to the 1 and a half power, which is 3 halves. So x plus 2, and it's okay to put that in parentheses. The answer in a textbook would not put that in parentheses. So we've got 2 times x plus 1 to the 3 halves in the denominator. And that is our answer. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So maybe we want to try something like that again. So let's, let's see what we got here. So what we have here is multiplication. But I think that the big takeaway here is this part. Oh, we can combine those two. That should have been an aha moment. It should have been like a light bulb going off going, oh, never really had to do that before on a regular basis. Maybe it was one type of problem where it said combine, but here we are having to be thinking of these things. So let's take a look at the next one. The next one, I've got a fraction times a fraction. Actually, it's a fraction, one term. So this right here is all one term, so it's one fraction. But this next one is two terms. So I've got a term, and then I've got another term. So just like when I have three on the outside of x plus five, right? Two terms on the inside, a term, a term, and, an, and a factor on the outside, and we distribute, we can do the same thing here. It's just that our fraction or our value on the outside happens to be this long, complicated, fraction-looking thing. But when you use color, it's the beauty of color, 
when you use color, you can see the distributive property. So I can distribute, use the distributive property and do it that way, right? I can also, so this is one way to do this. I can also, these are all different things that you need to be thinking about. I can say, hmm, what if I want one fraction here? Can I get this to be one fraction? Because then if I have one fraction times one fraction, I can just multiply across. Look, one fraction times one fraction. You just multiply across two times one over three times five. And sometimes, you maybe, maybe that's a 50, sometimes before you even multiply across, you can cancel out to make things easier, right? So that's another way that we can do this. You've probably used distributive property so many times that you don't need me to show you how to do that distributive property. In fact, you don't need me to tell you that if we do that distributive property, that fraction times the second fraction is going to be pretty messy. So let's try and make one fraction We want to make this one fraction, so I'm going to have to get a common denominator. So I'm going to have 2 over 2 times the square root of x squared plus 1 over 2 times the square root of x squared plus 1 plus 2x, change the color here, 2x over 2 times the square root of x squared plus 1. And let me use a, another colored highlighter so you can see this one became this. Okay? You're doing great. You're doing great. You're doing fantastic. So now I've got 2 times the square root of x squared plus 1 plus 2x all over 2 times the square root of x squared plus 1. Remember, you just retain that denominator. And then before that, I had 1 over x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. Now, in this fraction right here, look at these two terms. They have a 2 in common. So I'm going to factor out that 2. So now all the work that we've done to this point, it's starting to all come together. Simplify by factoring. Okay, so the numerator has a 2 in common. So that's going to leave me the square root of x squared plus 1 plus x because I factored out the 2. And then I've got a 2 in the denominator times the square root of x squared plus 1. So remember that you can cancel out factors. So this 2 cancels out with this 2. And look at this beautiful binomial, the square root of x squared plus 1 plus x is indeed the same as x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. It's the same thing as saying 3 plus 7 is the same as 7 plus 3. With addition, your commutative property completely works. So those two are the same thing. So I'm going to take my purple pen and I'm canceling those out. So now when I multiply straight across, all I have in the numerator is 1 and all I have in the denominator is the square root of x squared plus 1, which we now know we can write a number of different ways. We can write this as 1 over x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. We can also rationalize the square root of x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1. I'm going to box my first answer because that's the one I feel most comfortable with. I love that answer, but wouldn't surprise me if some students gave me a version of the other two answers. Could be either one of those other two answers. So we've got some for you to try. We've got a couple for you to try. Um, go ahead and press pause. And um, actually, I'm going to end it right here. When I come back in the next one, I'll come back with the answers. This way you can take a breather, keep this on your screen, and you can work 